What's up guys, welcome to Neek with Sandra Nerd slash Geek, and if that relates to you, I would consider clicking that subscribe button. So yeah, 2021 is here in one day, and I decided to bring you my top 10 most anticipated TV seasons of 2021. Um, it's actually pretty crazy. Um, normally there's not, I don't watch that many much new TV, especially like new TV. Like I watch a couple new TV seasons a year. Um, but this year, randomly, there there's just a lot of stuff I'm really excited about. Like, there's more TV shows I'm excited about coming in 2021 than all the seasons I saw in 2020. Um, and I had to get this video out today because one of them, I'm pretty sure you can guess which one, is actually coming out tomorrow. So expect some more end of the year stuff. Um, like I'll do the same thing for movies, but I need to get this video up first because I need to get out before January 1st. Um, so yeah, let's get started with some honorable mentions. So first thing for honorable mentions I want to mention is uh, three shows that I they don't have an official release date. Like I don't really know if they're officially coming out in 2021. So um, I can't really pin them on the top 10, but at least two of these would be in my top 10 if they if they like definitely are coming in 2021 and that is Hawkeye um and or and Monsters at Work. I really hope Monsters at Work comes cuz I'm just really excited about that. I'm going to give my final shot with the Arrowverse. I'm kind of getting tired with the Arrowverse, but we do have a new show Superman and Lois, so I'm going to give Superman and Lois a try and hopefully it's good and The Flash season 7 will be my last try with The Flash. If I don't like this season, I think I'm just going to have to stop watching it. But one last try with the Arrowverse. And then I want to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League because this is kind of weird. It's kind of a limited series, also kind of a movie because they said they're going to pit it, release in four parts, one hour each, and then after combine it into a four hour movie. So I didn't know where to pit it, but I, I guess it counts as a limited series because that's how it's going to be released originally, but I just felt weird kind of pitting in the top 10. And then there are two shows that just didn't crack the top 10, and those are Bad Batch and Brooklyn Nine-Nine Season 8. Brooklyn Nine-Nine is the only um, like network comedy I'm watching at the moment. Um, it's like on NBC. There's a bunch of NBC like comedies I really like like The Office, Parks and Rec, Community, but they're all like done. So this is actually like the only show that's on comedy show that's ongoing that I'm watching. Um, and it's just a really solid show. And I just hope it doesn't, it doesn't like trail off because it's going into season eight. Most shows can't survive till season eight. So I'm hoping it will still be good. So let's dive in to the top 10. So coming in at number 10 is Miss Marvel. I'm not really going to go in detail for all the Marvel projects because I've already talked a lot about them there. But um, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of this character and I'm just a big fan of the MCU. So I'm excited about it. And then coming in at number 9 is Stargirl Season 2. I was a really big fan of the first season. You can check out my review up there. Um, I'm just a little bit scared because it's, not, it's just going to be on the CW. The first season... It was like on DC Universe and the CW. That's where the production value was better. The everything was better because it wasn't just the CW. So I'm a little bit scared that because it's just on the CW, it will have a quality drop. But I'm hoping it won't. And number eight, we have the book of Boba Fett. Now, Boba Fett in The Mandalorian is was pretty awesome. Boba Fett was a character that he was like cool but he never really did anything in the original trilogy so it's cool to just actually see Boba Fett do stuff um and I'm glad we're getting this right now because we're taking a break from Mando because I really liked how Mando season two ended and I kind of just want a break because of how that ended I don't want him to just rush into Mando season three so I'm glad we're focusing on these Mando sort of spinoffs I'm calling it the Mandoverse I hope that sticks um that's the Mandalorian and all its sort of spin-off shows that will tie into each other. And then coming in at number seven is Amazon's Untitled Lord of the Rings show. I'm a giant Middle Earth fan and I'm just really excited about checking out this show. Especially because we're gonna get to get to explore the second age, which um I don't know that much about, so I'm excited to sort of explore something we've never really seen before 
in the Middle Earth world. It's not higher because I I just don't really we just don't really know much about like we don't even know the official name or anything. So um, it can't be high on the list, but I'm still really excited to check it out. And even for uh, Christmas. I got a bunch of the extra, like, all the extra, like, Lord of the Rings sort of books, like, the Similarian I got here. So, um, I think I'm gonna read up on the Second Age before the show comes out. And then coming in at number six is What If, um, looks something kind of different from what the MCU's done, so it's pretty exciting. Um, like, a cool thing that they're doing, but it's not paint part of the main continuity, so that's why it's not my most anticipated Marvel show. And then WandaVision. This comes out in just a couple weeks, so I'm really excited. Um, it seems to be doing a lot of different sort of things from what we've seen from the MCU, and it seems to be, like, really play on the idea of, like, this has to be a TV show, the way they're doing things, which I think is a great way to um do these sort of shows do it in only a format that a tv show could do to make it different from the movies and coming in at number four is cobra kai season three if all these shows came out at the same time cobra kai season three might not be like this high on my ranking but this comes out tomorrow and yeah that just ups my excitement like i i really just can't wait to check this out um, check out my video on the show right up there, and I'm, you'll see that I'm a pretty big fan of the show, um, and also this season's reviews have already dropped, and they've been good, so I, I just can't wait to watch the show tomorrow. Coming in at number three is Stranger Things 4. Now, I'm a massive Stranger Things fan. You can check out my video there. Uh, that's not completely accurate for my ranking of the seasons, but most of my thoughts is sort of accurate. I rewatched the show, and now basically I think Every season is like on the same level. They all have their things that they do better than the other seasons and things they do worse. So I'd really pit them like all just like on the same level. I don't know how I'd rank them anymore. But um, I love all three of them. This would be number one, but we just don't know enough about it. We got the teaser and we got some casting announcements, which did up my excitement, but we just don't know enough. And that's why it's not at number one. It's still at number three because I'm I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah, I just can't wait for another season of Stranger Things. Coming in at number two is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This needs to be sort of the follow-up of the Captain America trilogy, which is my favorite of the MCU trilogies, and I especially love the Winter Soldier and Civil War in there. Um, I'm a big fan of these characters, and I think they can do some really interesting stuff in there, and the trailer just looked, looked really good. And then coming in at number one is Loki. It looks super different and fresh and interesting and oh like all the stuff with the trailer just outs my excitement kind of how it's like a mystery and Loki kind of does some of like the mysteries of the world. It just it just looks really interesting and it, it just helps I love Loki as a character. And um also I know the showrunner slash writer of this uh show, Michael Waldron. And I don't wanna say too much, but when this gets closer to the release there may be a special video with a special guest. That's all I'm going to say. So yeah, that is my top 10 most anticipated TV shows of 2021. Comment down below what are your most anticipated TV shows of 2021. Uh, please like and subscribe and keep watching Neek.